One-Shot Metamorphosis is a short and scary Halloween-themed mod for the original game that starts off familiar enough but quickly dissolves into a progressively more confusing and ultimately very sad short story. Similar to base One-Shot, you wake up in Nico's house, but there's a very obvious distinction. The person you wake up as is decidedly more human-like, complete with ears and normal eyes. Even the narrative dialogue doesn't refer to you as Nico, just the child. You fumble around Nico's house making puzzle-based decisions in traditional one-shot fashion, but then something very odd happens because after solving the typical door puzzle at the beginning of the game, time skips forward and we're immediately talking to Silver. No profit bot introduction, no jelly-based puzzles. We're immediately in this exact moment of the story. Before I continue, just know that videos on RPG Maker mods and stuff like that don't really have much of a presence on YouTube, so by all means, subscribe and join the Discord server in the description so that you can be kept up to date on when new one-shot fan projects come out. We're meant to fill in some of the blanks ourselves since this mod is built on the assumption you experienced the normal game, so having gotten the whole spiel about being the messiah, the child communicates this to Silver. Silver is as straightforward and honest as ever, telling the child pretty much the exact same thing that she told Nico, the fact that restoring light to the world with the sun will not save the entire world on its own, and that the whole thing is a fool's errand. But as we already know, this is not enough to deter Nico or this new character from completing their mission. This is where things start to get really strange because time skips forward again and we're in Alula's company and I'm not sure why we skipped to this exact moment out of all the scenes in one shot but it's fine because Alula's just the best if we're being perfectly honest. Just like the previous scene things play out mostly the same but Alula does make a remark about how she's surprised the messiah is a normal kid like her. We skip forward to the next scene once more and we're in the refuge with Kelvin and a bunch of cats. One of them meows at the child before taking its leave. Keep this in mind because believe it or not, it becomes important later. We go through what is assumed to be the last time skip and we're at the climax and final confrontation that wrecked the hearts of many a one-shot fan for years now, the Tower Room. And it's here that this mod opens up to us and we start to see the exact format it's going for because we wake up in Nico's house again, and this time as Nico himself, albeit with adorable ears that weren't present in base one-shot. Now before I go on to explain the next story segment for this thing, I want to say that I've made it no secret in other videos that it is getting tiring having every one-shot mod follow areas and story beats that are so similar to the vanilla game. It's such an intriguing and multi-layered world that revisiting it through multiple fan projects only to see the same thing every time is like going to a place far away from home and going on the same tour over and over. I want to see new characters, new places, the whole nine yards, though I understand it is easier to use past tile sets and assets. And I suppose at the end of the day Metamorphosis' goal was to deliver a creepy story that mirrors the main game's narrative. It's a little side thing so I can understand why it's not as ambitious as the developer's other project that I covered, One Shot Fading Memory. Putting that criticism aside, things are super unorthodox at this point. We go through the same highlight reels that the child before us took, but entirely as Nico. The story even ends in the same way, but upon getting kicked back to the main menu and firing up the game another time, we arrive at the most tragic point in the story yet. Nico wakes up, but without his human ears. But being as resilient as we are, we go through the story again, despite this setback, because One Shot fans know how to deal with loss better than most fans out there, and it's the fourth time we wake up in this mod that we see the strangest scene up to this point. We wake up as the very thing Nico has been clarifying he isn't for years now, a cat. I know a lot of this seems somewhat redundant and it's frustrating to be in the dark about what's going on, but trust me, before long the objective of this mod and why its story is being formatted the way it is will become very clear. Your ability to interact with the environment is much more limited now, with lots of things just not being an option to you anymore, such as your computer. Cat Nico finds the sun in the basement accompanied by some cool original cutscene art, and things continue on as usual, though your interactions with the main cast of One Shot play out differently since you can't really communicate with any of them, and Nico doesn't find this out until he arrives in refuge with Kelvin again. It's at this point that the other cats tell Nico that he's a cat as well, who's unable to be understood by anyone around him, and it's clear that there's some creepy satisfaction these cats take in telling him this because not only do they reveal that he's a helpless cat here, but they almost brag that Nico's memories he's holding onto that validate him being a person are entirely fake. The wheat fields, the memories of his mom, the pancakes, all of it. These are the same memories each subsequent cat before him had, all merely an illusion. Nico breaks down, his thoughts of eventually going home and restoring light to this place souring in his stomach. He reluctantly goes by the fire with the other cats, but then another child comes by to talk to Kelvin. Nico is eager to break the cycle and tries to warn them before they turn into a cat themselves, but he has zero way to impart this warning, and it 
dawns on him here that the cat that walked up to him on his initial journey was in the same position he's in now. If all of that wasn't awful enough, the other cats tell Nico that the one pulling the strings behind all of this was you. Nico reaches out in a desperate plea, but you aren't able to answer. Of course, a lot of the information Nico is being fed at this point is manipulation on the part of the world machine, who seems to have a weird sadism about him that makes him want to emotionally torment Nico and these other people. Perhaps Nico's backstory is entirely true. Perhaps his mom is genuinely waiting for him outside of this place, but Nico's last interaction with you here and what they think of themselves is based on these awful lies that they're being told. It's a huge bummer to say the least. Some people might find all of this to be unnecessarily grotesque. The mod beats Nico's optimism right out of him and condemns him to an infinitely trapped cycle where he can't save people or do anything about it as they walk willingly to their own demise, basically like watching someone on the create account page of Twitter. It's very hard to watch, yeah, but I do think it makes for some very powerful storytelling, and if there's one thing Zimbra Zamber taught us with their mod one-shot fading memory, it's that they aren't afraid to put Nico through some really turbulent stuff. Seriously, I think this guy has it out for him at this point or something. And with how impressive fading memory was, I'm really unsure as to why the pacing in this mod is really, really bad. For as creepy and somber as the ending was, I'm not sure I can say the build-up was entirely worth it. Going through a near-identical cycle four different times was tedious to say the least, and while some of that tedium was alleviated by seeing what it ultimately was building up to, it just didn't completely justify the uneven pacing. I absolutely loved Nico's helplessness as a cat being communicated through gameplay though. The way he wasn't able to interact with certain puzzles or talk to NPCs really drove home how hopeless the ending scene was. I do think it's a bit indulgent when a story just has darkness for darkness's sake. When there isn't an underlying message to extract from a written work, someone can walk away from this whole thing and easily go, what was it all for? I won't spoil anything, but Omori's ending definitely had some powerful messages that could be extracted and applied to the player's own life outside of the game. It taught us the importance of confronting the worst part of ourselves and how to ultimately triumph over those parts. And if anything, the story's darkest moments just exemplified this and made it even more cathartic when we did see the ending. Walking away from Metamorphosis, I don't feel like I've learned or gained anything narratively, merely experienced a ludicrously sad story just for the sake of it. Like arguing with a Reddit moderator, I feel like I walked away from something very articulate and well put together, but felt even worse because of that. Like I was just kicking my feet around waiting to be sad, questioning why I even participated in the first place. But overall, if you're looking for a neat twisted spin on the one-shot universe that somehow manages to top the doom and gloom of the vanilla game, I doubt you could find anything that'll wreck your mood quite as bad as one-shot metamorphosis.